Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. And we've got a special guest here on the channel. First now, time. I know, first time on the channel. We're here on the Computex show floor checking out the MSI booth. So I believe they've got a handful of monitors, four or five monitors to look at that are brand new, going to be coming to the market this year. So good to see there's no products that are sort of scheduled for three, four years into the future. This is all stuff for 2023. So let's go take a look. But before we do... The Harbour Unbox Computex coverage is brought to you by MSI and Thermal Grizzly. Check out MSI's X670E Tomahawk Wi-Fi offering complete support for the full range of AMD Ryzen 7000 and 7000 X3D CPUs with its powerful 14 plus 1 plus 1 80 amp digital smart power VRM to ensure temperatures stay cool even under full system load. The Tomahawk also takes full advantage of DDR5 memory with dedicated SMT welding and patented MSI memory boost technology, delivering clean and pure high frequency DDR5 signals. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Also supporting our Computex trip is Thermal Grizzly and their Cryonaut and Hydronaut Thermal Grease. Cryonaut is designed for extreme demands of overclocking, offering excellent thermal conductivity, long-term stability, and it isn't electrically conductive. Then for larger applications, Hydronaut offers an attractive price to performance ratio and is recommended for water cooling systems. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. All right, this is a product that I am super interested about and I've been told is coming in the fourth quarter of this year, so towards the end of the year. This is the Project 491C QD OLED. So obviously we've seen throughout this past couple of years, a lot of QD OLED monitors that are 34 inch, 3440 by 1440, delivering awesome levels of HDR quality because they are OLEDs. Well, if you wanted a wider version of that, that is gonna be coming towards the end of this year. So extending from 34 inch out to 49 inch, we go up to a, I think it should say somewhere, but I believe it should be 5120 by 1440 resolution. 240 hertz refresh rate so we get bump up in the refresh rate as well up from 165 175 hertz up to 240 hertz and obviously all the benefits we've seen from samsung's qd oled panels previously so this display looks awesome uh it does yeah. look very it's very vivid very impressive obviously oled very so, wide yeah uh, so. and you'd need a new desk i'd imagine if you want to put this thing on there yes so wow some elements of this design are not final we've been told from msi specifically the stand i believe is going to have some tweaks between this model that they're showing at computex and the final version that will be coming towards the end of the year but the panel itself i mean this is the panel that we'll, we'll be seeing there and yeah i'm super keen one of the things that they've improved compared to their previous qd oled monitor was that this sort of thick chin that was running along the bottom bottom of the screen that i wasn't the biggest fan of in my review and it's probably one of the the key talking points that sort of knocked it down a bit compared to its competitors but they've gotten rid of that it's sort of a normal thin bezel design we don't have a lot of ability to examine the screen in depth so things like looking at the flaws that we've seen from qd oled like reflectivity you know the sub pixel layout and things we're expecting that to be pretty similar from this panel and of course, it just being wider. That's the main the main thing that we're sort of seeing there and the increased refresh rate. So this will be a high-end monitor, expensive, I imagine, sort of priced towards the high end of the range. But if you want that sort of immersive experience with flight control sticks used for you know, all sorts of immersive games, flight sims, single player experiences, this will probably be the monitor to get. And yeah, as Steve said earlier, maybe maybe a new desk. Uh, yeah, you like definitely this. need a new desk. Well you know, giant mouse pad here and it's much wider than that, much longer. Would you use something like this for Fortnite? Does the does the immersivity benefit Fortnite or? It would be interesting to try out. I'm intrigued, but no, I, I don't no, think so. You just use the no. normal one? Well, I, I've not tried it, so it's hard to say. Get but MSI to ship you one. Yeah, you I'll get guys? one and I'll <laughs> test it out and I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Yeah, so I'll happily do it. Very keen to check this one out. Very, very excited. I think this will be highly competitive uh, in terms of like high end flagship monitors. So. Yeah, super keen on this one. All right, I need Tim to tell me something about this monitor because I know it's 32 inch, high refresh rate, and they're kind of the monitors I tend to love. <laughs> this is probably more the kind of gaming monitor I would use. Well, it is 4K, and I know that you like, I mean, you use basically the predecessor to this monitor. So the first thing that steps out to my eye, really good job from MSI, the name, MAG323 UPF. Now, I'm still, I'm still practicing, but the, pre the predecessor, the MPG 321 URF-QD, something like that, too long. So a bit shorter on the name, loving that. 
So the idea with this monitor is a couple of things. One of the main weaknesses of the predecessor was its response time performance. This was sort of something we saw throughout a lot of the 32 inch 4K gaming monitors. Not the best for speed, but with this new panel we're getting this you know, supposed rapid IPS, but sort of a new generation of, of IPS technology that will help improve the performance there. What we're not getting is the, the quantum dot element, but we're still expecting sort of very good color performance. I imagine wide gamut and all that sort of thing, like like a lot of modern monitors. And yeah, 160 hertz, 4K, 32 inch, with things like HDMI 2.1, full bandwidth, that's being retained. It's got power delivery up to, says, 90 watts on there. So a lot of performance there for sort of your laptops and things like that. And then, yeah, on top of that, very aggressive price point. I've been told 699 USD, which will be certainly among the cheaper of the 32 inch 4K monitors like this. So yeah, it's very good to see sort of the 4K price sort of dialing down, especially for the, the monitors that you like, as the predecessor was around that 900 to to $1,000 US. This coming in at $700 will sort of open that up for many more gamers. So yeah, really liking the look of that one. I think they'll be pretty competitive and hopefully we'll be able to test it sort of, I don't know, a couple of months later this year. Okay, so we just looked at the 32-inch 4K monitor that MSI is coming out with, that nice sort of more affordable version, and well, they're making a 27-inch model as well. So this one, the MAG274 UPF, it's interesting, I still have to read these ones directly off the, the page just for now. I'm sure I'll get some practice in on that. So this is 27-inch 4K monitor at 144 hertz. So we've seen previously MSI had the MAG281 URF or MEG281 URF, something like that. All the names, they're bloody terrible. Um, anyway, so that monitor was sort of, again, that sort of more affordable 4K gaming monitor, no real HDR capabilities, but was that sort of entry level, not, not super entry level considering the price, but it was a really solid monitor I felt, ran really well. Well, this is the successor to that. It's even more affordable, and I'm told it's supposed to have faster response times as well, with a jump up to a, a different panel. So changing it from 28 inch down to 27 inch, that's pretty negligible, makes pretty much no difference. But I've been told a price point on this one, I think it was 549 US, so that's very competitive. I think that's 50 to $100 US below the previous model. And we've seen this new Gigabyte M27U that came out that's around that same price point as well. So I'm very keen to sort of make a battle there. Let's see which one of those brands, MSI and Gigabyte, they sound very similar. So yeah, obviously HDMI 2.1 capabilities with this product as well. I believe it's display HDR 400, so we're not expecting too much on the HDR front. Um, but yeah, very keen on seeing that because again, 4K to sort of new price point is pretty interesting. Uh, we want to see that hit $500 as quickly as possible and things like this are sort of well on the way to that. So yeah, very, very excited about that product. I'm told that it may not be too many weeks from now that I'll be able to get that in the labs and start testing it out. The other product that we want to look at is this one here, which pretty interesting one as well. So the Curve VA monitor, the MAG 325CQRXF. That one is going to be a difficult one. That's hard. That, that, they'll require some practice on that one. Now, the previous VA monitor that I tested from MSI, I kind of destroyed. I wasn't a huge fan of it. The performance wasn't great, things like dark level smearing, because the VA performance was sort of more entry level, but the pricing was sort of more mid-range. MSI tells me that this is a more optimized version of that with what they're calling a rapid VA panel. So improved response times, optimized dark level smearing. We'll see what where that turns out in our sort of testing. Um, not sure on that one, but they're confident that it should be superior to the previous monitor that we looked at. So main specs on this one, 32 inch, 1440p, 240 hertz, which we'd sort of expect from VA panels these days. Hopefully it will be similar to something like a Samsung Odyssey G7 in terms of its performance. Um, no, it's got all the, the usual things. It's got a KVM switch in there, 1000 R curvature. Yeah, I think with VA panels these days, very much we have to wait and see what the performance is like in the labs before we can really get sold on a product like that. But I'm hopeful. I'll certainly give it a try. I'll test it and yeah, we'll see where it lands. So yeah, very interesting range of MSI monitors here. We've had the, the 49 inch over there, the the monster, the 32 inch that Steve's been very interested in, yeah. the affordable 27 inch and, and this VA as well. And of course here the QD OLED that, that we've already tested. And yeah, a few people have sort of been talking about how hard it was to buy this monitor, very little supply, but MSI seemed to be a bit confident that supply is going to improve shortly for that sort of product. So it should be a bit easier to find if you've been struggling to find the that particular QD OLED. So yeah, 
really keen on checking out some of these products. I hope that QD OLED comes in very soon because that could be an upgrade path for me. All right, so we just looked at some gaming monitors from MSI. They've also got some new professional business sort of monitors in their modern line. This one, again, sort of have to look at the name, the MD272QXPW. And this is pretty interesting. This is a 1440p, so 2560 by 1440, 27-inch IPS monitor that is designed for creators but still has a 100 hertz refresh rate. Which I think is awesome. Yeah, it's not the super high refresh that we see from gaming monitors, but 60 hertz these days, even for productivity apps, there's still that advantage from using the slightly higher refresh rate. So 100 hertz, this monitor is going to be a lot more usable than something that was at a lower refresh rate. On top of that, obviously, we get a lot of the color benefits. They're quoting 10-bit color here with this product. Phaser Display HDR 400 certification. And also some really interesting IQ features that they're calling. They're calling IQ Check, where you can make sure that your vision's working properly, that your posture's adjusted properly. We'll get some B-roll of that, because something I've never really seen in a monitor before. Admittedly, I don't look at a lot of pro monitors, but just being able to check out your vision, make sure it's working properly, is really neat. I also like the built-in uh, blue light reduction feature that's hardware in this monitor. A lot of monitors use just software to reduce blue light, make it a bit more comfortable for your usage. But this monitor does something fancy with the backlight to reduce the blue light there. I need to get a few more technical details to figure out exactly how that's working, but at least it's, it's pretty neat, it's pretty interesting. So like with a lot of MSI's monitor designs, I think this is it's pretty sleek and thin looking and it's nice and white, very ergonomic design with lots of adjustability which you always like with these sorts of products and yeah I think it looks pretty cool yeah I think it has KVM support as well KVM support too so really appreciate that if you're using it with say a monitor and your laptop and you can get things like 65 watts of power delivery for your laptop as well just via a single cable so that's pretty neat so yeah that's their 27 inch 1440p option let's go take a look at their 4k one all right, Tim, tell me about the modern MD271 UL. That's not even that long, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's actually one of the more reasonable names that we see these days. So, yeah, I, MSI tells me this is their first 4K business-oriented monitor. So what we're looking at, 27-inch IPS design with 4K, 60 hertz, but it does have, you know, the wide color gamut that you'd like as a creator, 99% DCI-P3, 95% Adobe RGB. So if you're doing video work or photo work, something like this is gonna give you all that wide gamut functionality. And like a lot of MSI monitors, it has those built-in color modes you, so you can choose between, you know, sRGB focus, DCI-P3 focus. And I tend to find that works pretty well across a lot of their products. So it tends to be pretty accurate and, and nice to see. The thing I really appreciate about appreciate about this product is the design. I think it looks really sleek and slick, very thin but still very strong aluminium stand that we're getting here. And that just allows you all this desk space. So often in our sort of offices and stuff when we're editing videos, we have stuff everywhere. USB card readers, SD cards, cameras. And if you're using a gaming monitor for video editing, the stand's always so massive and they clog up the area. But with something like this, you can even put things on the stand easily, it's compact. And then you look at the sides and stuff, it's very slim. And on the back, which I'm sure we'll get B-roll of, is easy port access. So we were just in our hotel room trying to plug in some monitors and trying to find the exact way that they go in under the back. But with this monitor, plug it straight into the back. So I won't have to headbutt the desk? You don't have to headbutt the oh, desk, good. it's very easy. Good. We should have got one of those then. I've seen that with some other products as well. And like the previous 1440p monitor we we're looking at, it's got the same sort of IQ check features, the same blue light features as well. It doesn't have the KVM switch, so maybe they'll add that in in a future update or something. 65 watt power delivery as well. So yeah, a pretty impressive compact 4K monitor that I think looks great and I think would go well with a lot of uh, desk setups. So that does it for the MSI booth and the monitors that they had on show. As I said towards the start, really keen to check out some of these products. I believe the 27 inch 4K model should be available for testing in the next couple of weeks, so I'm told. So really keen to check out that and obviously the rest of the products will come in throughout the rest of the year. So yeah, Computex is a great place for monitors. We'll probably be checking out a couple more brands throughout the rest of the rest of the show right here on Monitors Unbox. So make sure you're subscribed. And what else is there to say? Not that much. Did you enjoy seeing monitors and I'm, checking out some stuff? I'm considering taking over Monitors Unbox for a week. Oh, yeah. There'll be no real content. I just want to play with that gigantic monitor that'd and be, a couple of other that'd ones. That would be pretty so, yeah. good, I reckon. So if Tim disappears for a week and there's no content, I've taken over. I'm just doing all the fun stuff. And then awesome. Tim will have to actually rebuild the channel because I've, I've killed it. <laughs> you just tank it. Yeah. Nah, nah. I'll try to go fine even if you were hosting. <laughs>
All right. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks, everyone, that was watching. And, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. See you later, guys.